Hello everyone, this is Steffi here again with another art docent. This one is Artists Use Color. Artists use color in many ways to tell us what they see and how they feel about the world. Sometimes they use colors in a very realistic way. That is, just the way they appear in nature. Sometimes they change the colors they see and use them in an emotional or expressive way to make us feel something very strongly. Sometimes they use them in a decorative or symbolic way. The first piece that we see here is called Woman with a Fan. It's by Alexei von Jelinski, who lived from 1864 to 1941. What are the three most important colors in this portrait of a woman with a fan? It appears to be red, yellow, and blue. These are the primary colors on the color wheel. Did the artist use them in a realistic way or a more decorative manner? The colors are bright and strong. Did he show us a lot of detail? No, if you zoom in, there are no fingernails or details in the eyes or fabric or the background. Can you find any black outlines? These are also called contour lines and they show us the edges of things. Can you find a tan outline around her face? Look for places where the artist used small amounts of green. Can you find the artist's brush strokes? Do you think he painted rapidly or slowly? Does the woman look sad or thoughtful? Why is she holding a fan? She has her head tipped to the side and is wearing a large dark hat with a big red flower on it. Jelinski was a Russian painter. He worked with several groups of artists who were very interested in using bright and expressive colors. Let's zoom in a little so you can get a better bead of some of the details or lack thereof. She looks a little sad to me. I was surprised she was holding a fan and not a kerchief. Our next painting is over to the left, has a lot more detail. This one is called Girl Reading, very straight and to the point, by Fra Gonar, who actually lived from 1732 to 1806. The artist Fra Gonar has used warm colors to make this portrait of a young girl as she sits reading a book. We see her in profile and the light seems to be coming from the left. We see shadows behind her on the right. The colors as well as the subject itself make us feel relaxed and peaceful. She is seated in a chair with cushions. We see many curves. Notice how her little finger is curved as she holds the book. Notice the curves of her sleeves and her hair. Where else do you see curves? Fragonar used a neutral color behind her so that we would focus on her quiet beauty. Can you find some areas that are nearly white? Can you sit in this same position and hold a book? We might be very good at it right now during quarantine. Fragonar was born in France in 1732. This was about 50 years before Washington was the President of the United States. He liked to paint landscapes and interiors of homes that included people in the composition. Let's zoom in a little and check on the detail there are her sleeves. And the collar of her dress. A beautiful profile and a ribbon in her hair.
We'll go to the last painting in this series. Does anyone recognize this? I'm sure you'll recognize the artist's name. This was by Pablo Picasso, and it's called A Portrait of Sylvette. Picasso lived from 1881 to 1974. The artist Picasso used neutral colors for this profile of a young girl named Sylvette. He used black, white, and gray. While we refer to these as colors, they are not found in the spectrum or on the color wheel. When an artist uses one color and mixes different light and dark tones, we say the work is monochromatic. Picasso saw this girl walking by one day and was intrigued with her ponytail, which was a new fashion at the time. He made many pictures of her. He gave her one of them, and later she sold it to buy herself a studio when she became an artist herself. He has used both long and short brush strokes in a rather quick, sketchy manner. His lines and brush strokes are very sure and definite. How did he make the texture of her hair? Can you find any contour lines and edges? Pablo Picasso was one of the greatest artists who ever lived. As a child, he liked to collect things peach pits, seashells, stones, etc. He liked to draw and once got into trouble by drawing on the walls of his living room. Imagine how his mother felt when she found that her son had painted his younger sister with an egg yolk. His father was an art teacher and one day when they were at the beach, young Pablo drew a picture in the sand that made his father see just how talented he was. When he had children of his own, he enjoyed making funny masks and playing pretend games with them, often acting out the Spanish bullfights of which he was so fond. Although he was born in Spain, he spent most of his life in France. Early in his career, he had a blue period, when he used that color most of the time. Later, he had a rose period, in which circus themes were explored. He invented many ways to paint. We'll zoom in a little on this so you can catch some of the detail of Sylvette. Beautiful high ponytail. So some of the terms that we use today, the color wheel is a device that organizes colors and helps us understand them. The colors are arranged around it in rainbow order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. The primary colors especially featured in this center composition, are red, yellow, and blue. If two of these are mixed together, they make a secondary color. Red and yellow make orange. Blue and yellow make green. And red and blue make violet or purple. I'm sure you were answering those at home as well. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. They contrast strongly with each other. Red and green, orange and blue, and yellow and violet are complementary colors. If we mix a little red paint with green paint, we make a dull green. If we mix them in equal amounts, we make gray. If you stare for 20 seconds at a small green square that you have placed in the center of a piece of white paper, you will see it complement on the white paper after you remove the green paper. Value has to do with the color's lightness or darkness. Light colors are called tints, T-I-N-T-S. Dark colors are called shades. 
Neutral colors are white, gray, and black. Warm colors are red, orange, and yellow because they remind us of fire and warm things. Cooler colors are blue, green, and violet because they remind us of water, snow, and cool things. So, I hope you enjoyed today's Art Docent program. Can't wait until we're all together to hear your discussion about where you have seen these out in the world. And Please stay well and wash your hands. Until next time, this is Steffi signing off.